I feel like I should be drafting Jace the Mind Sculptor back one pick one here. Or maybe Frantic Search. I want to draft Workshop though. I'm kind of in a Workshop mood. I might always be in a Workshop mood. Doing this. Oh, let's Sundering Titan. I feel like somehow my coffee machine got slower. Ooh. So as much as I want this Forge Master, I think Urza's Saga is probably a <laughs> a premium pickup in the um artifact deck, huh? Well this sucks. Um looking at uh, maybe Stoneforge Mystic, maybe Imperial Recruiter. Imperial Critter could work if we get like Goblin Welder, maybe. Oh, it's the caffeine dependency. My addiction worsens, but the machine stays the same. <laughs> so I think it's so I think it's going slower. But it's actually the same speed as always. I just like need the caffeine more. I see. I'm gonna be like chewing coffee beans here to get my my fix. <laughs> Snorting a line of freshly ground coffee. Maybe set Twitch. Mono Blue is usually kind of tough. That makes a little, me a little less nervous. Takes a load off, huh? So I'm actually gonna take Smokestack over Mind Slaver here. Kinda wish I grabbed the Stoneforge Mystic now. I think we took Recruiter over it. Or maybe it was the Relic, I don't know. My replacement mug. You're bringing up my fucking broken mug that I broke just yesterday. It's a little soon, isn't it? A little soon for all that. Ah, oh, my coffee's done. Yes! Um... This thing? I don't know. Hey, I'm Shadows, thanks for 24 months there. Two years of sweet daddy Caleb. Oh yeah. What am I playing tomorrow? Oh, for uh, for modern. I'm I'm gonna be jamming a bunch of um. Uh, creativity decks. Yes, Forge Master wield. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, Kapoop Lindings, the sub, thinks the nine months. Yeah. You surprised I didn't grab Lion Sash? Yeah, I didn't think the Stormforge Mystic would wheel for one, and then for two, um, Bergy can work really well with uh, Goblin Welder. If we get Goblin Welder. The, uh, the Horn of Bounty plays particularly well with it. 
This is an interesting pack. There's Thespian Stage that combines really well with Urza Saga, and then there's also just Basalt Monolith. I think I want the Monolith real bad here. Crocus is also good. But I just like need to make sure that this workshop is good, and Monolith helps with that a lot. Huh, fuck this pack, huh? Is this the workshop pod deck? No. <laughs> no, no, it is not. Do I draft a resto? Do I take an inspiring vantage? This shit's fucking miserable. I think I like the Stoneforge Batter Skull thing. I'm gonna grab the swords here. The sword gets better with Stoneforge. I don't hate getting. Happy Sunday, Grizzle! Ooh. As good as Monastery Mentor is, I think I want this Lotus. And Retrofitter is excellent with the uh, the Saga. Great pickup. It's sort of looking like a mulligan to Urza Saga or Misha's Workshop deck right now, which, not the end of the world. I think I like Wear and Tear over Land Tanks as a sideboard card. Sun Titan and Smokestack are pretty decent together. Yeah, welcome, Killer Quinn. A Mana Crypt would help out a lot, for sure. For sure. Hey, Strategist thinks this 12 months, the full year. Music volume, can you hear me fine? Volume's good. Nice. I fucking, um... I sold a piece of art. I sold a painting. Not mine. <laughs> Obviously. I sold an Omar Ryan piece. A, um... in our dealer slash friendly acquaintance that had um, done me a favor a few years ago, was looking for one. And it looked like he'd been looking like for one for a while, so. I was like, these are the pieces I have. But now I feel like a big time art dealer. <laughs> Because I actually sold something instead of just <laughs> buying it, telling myself it's an investment. <laughs> Do I have a picture of it? I mean, I could just go grab it. I could show a picture. What do I want here? Grill Signet? The investment paid off? Yes, yeah, sort of.
Definitely drafting this Ballista, right? This is pack three. We don't have a Metal Worker. This is some horse shit. I think I like the Palace Jailer. Ooh, Grim Monolith helps. I like Wandering Emperor in the Stella deck a lot, too. Trying to figure out if I want Worm Coil or Ugin. Worm Coil is better if I get an early smokestack down. Ugin is better at like stabilizing a game. I think because we already have Batter Skull, I can go ahead and just like take Ugin here. I'm gonna grab Metamorph over Elish Norin. Actually, I'm gonna grab Elish. Well, Metamorph gives you like the double Lodestone Golem opener, which is kind of hot. Elishran just like wins some games though, and we do have like some real nice acceleration for it. Yeah, he asked me which uh, which piece I sold. Um, it was this one. Do, 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 do. A fluffy old fart on a ferret. That's a Omarion uh, watercolor that I'd picked up from uh, Everyday Original some years back, and I framed it myself. Um, it's got like it's behind museum glass and stuff. I think it looks nice. My other two uh, Omarion pieces are also watercolor, but I didn't frame either of them. Oh no. Super fungible, Master Mike. Kind of excited about this Wandering Emperor. This deck is awesome. They were just making an NFT joke, lost their goyf. Oh, I got you. Uh, yeah, museum glass is a lot more expensive and it doesn't, it's not as reflective. Um, like you can see a little bit of reflection in it, especially with the bright light. But if you have a picture that is not museum glass in the same lighting, it'll be like a mirror. You'll be able to like see yourself in the reflection of the glass. So museum glass is really, really nice if you care about the detail of a piece. I think one of the fun things about uh, dealing with original art is you get to like see the texture of it. So I care about that a lot. Reducing all the glare and what what. But it is expensive. So like most of my prints are just behind normal glass.
Uh, I don't know anything about the chemistry of it, Red 7. I just know how it interacts with light. Do we like ECD? I think I do. I think I like this Wandering Emperor a lot. I might cut Resto. We have a couple cards to play well with the Resto, though. The Three Minute Inspector, for example. The Stoneforge Mystic has two things to grab. Palace Jailer is a fun one to blink sometimes. <laughs> blink that Sundering Titan. I think I'm going to keep Mother of Runes in. The Relic doesn't add a ton, but it is another grab for Urza Saga. We've already drawn the Retrofitter. It's nice to have two things for Saga to get. What if I cut this Gruul Signet? I think I'm gonna cut the Forge Master too. It's like just getting Sundering Titan. That's not that exciting, right? And then I'm thinking about cutting Geddon. Oh, I shouldn't cut Geddon, that was Smokestack. I want to cut a non-artifact, though. Maybe it's three-minute Inspector. Yeah, we can cut Inspector now that we cut the resto. Is 16 lands fine? We have some mana rocks here. We don't. I don't know. I don't know if we have a critical mass of mana rocks. Urza Saga cannot get Walking Ballista. I know you're joking, but you can't get it. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of the dragon. Why do you think Thespian Sage is in here? <laughs> Why do you think I'm playing this card? <laughs> the Saga can't get Ballista. It literally cannot do that. <laughs> Ballista does not have a casting cost. Of zero or one. <laughs> its casting cost is XX. I promise you. Oh yeah, I need to have the green chef thing in the title. Yeah. Thanks to the stream elements bot for reminding me. Yeah, they're still sponsoring the channel for another like three days or so. Hashtag sponsored. Some folks have been sharing their uh, their meals. Either they're, like telling me about them or sending me pictures and stuff. It's been pretty fucking dope. People liking their food. Hey, a frozen zebra thinks about 33 months there. Cube indeed. Cube indeed. Do I have any more pictures? I'm. I feel like really self-conscious about taking photos of my photo of my food that I've cooked myself. 
Because sometimes I'll eat at like really nice restaurants and they'll plate it, plate it all fancy. So I know what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> I made the uh, the taco meal the other day and I like didn't even have time to consider taking photos. I was in such a rush. I just like fucking scarfed them down. Before I went to that show on Friday, I was like, all right, I gotta stop by the post office. I'm like printing things, like answering emails, like fucking putting out a bunch of fires. Taco in one hand, the other arm's a blur. Hey, PM Productions, thanks for the sub, thanks for the 75 months. And Smos, thanks for the 40. Appreciate you too. Where did E Pluribus Anus go? Oh, E Pluribus Anus is on that wall. Hell yeah, five again. I haven't had Korean barbecue in a long time. Uh, Sky Fionato. Y'all could take that to to um, to DMs. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Anytime a one-on-one -on -one conversation extends beyond like two pages of the chat, <laughs> you might as well just DM somebody. How's my morning? Morning's been great. Welcome back. I streamed yesterday. But uh but thanks. <laughs> I just tell Twitch chat to get a room. I do that sometimes. I don't mind if it's like a larger discussion. <laughs> like I can't follow every every conversation or whatever. But if it ever seems like it's literally just two people, I might say something. The Zuzu Saga can go get that um, that relic card. Uh, I worry that that's going to be too slow, though, with them bidding the Archon on two on the plane. What if it's one person, but they have multiple personalities? Hmm, that's a question. This is the biggest star in the history of the adult film industry. There's a certain intrigue that follows him. After working in the heat of the lights and the glamour... I don't want to be an Elishnorian because that might give them another reanimation target. Does he step out of our fantasies into a life of respected charm and wealth? Or is he a character of lust and perversion? Stalking the night for women and sex. Let's play this monolith out so the saga tokens are a little larger. I've had creeps come on multiple accounts and try and fucking I don't know, be weird. This person was like obviously one person, pretending to be multiple people, 
to like hit on me or something. It was very bizarre. I'm gonna wait for a mana before I jam Sorin. The opponent could have a removal spell on the, the creature that I equip, and then I won't have mana up for Relic. I wanna keep mana up for Relic. Weirdos be weirding, exactly, yeah. Were they creepier than the old Alana bot? I didn't think the old Alana bot was creepy. <laughs> I was like, because it was just very obviously a bot and um, <laughs> pretty clearly harmless, you know? I come here often. Yeah, every once in a while. Hey, Caleb! Hey, Caleb! What's a dump like you doing in a pretty place like this? Uh, just playing magic. What do we want here? Uh. Nothing, huh? It's not like any of these cards are like reanimator hosers or whatever. If we'd seen an aura enchant creature reanimation effect, then playing Terror could make sense. We didn't see that, they're all like instant reanimator stuff. It ain't pretty being easy, I like it. I like it. <laughs> Sort of piece of him and gives them a discard outlet. They, yeah, that's true. We had the relic going, and they had a uh, <laughs> bizarre Baghdad. Anyway, so you might have made your comment before they played the bizarre. I wonder if I'm supposed to be mulliganing this for workshop or saga. Our deck's like way better if I have one of those cards, but this is also a pretty reasonable curve. I think this is better than my average six. So I guess I'm supposed to keep it. Sometimes like better than your average six isn't a good heuristic though, right? Like if your average draw loses to your opponent's average draw, then maybe it makes sense to mulligan and look for, you know, an above average draw. It's good to have those like mental shortcuts, like is this better than the average six or whatever, because that'll help you like make decisions on average, but it's also good to think about the exceptions. Right, yeah, mold a relic or something. Wouldn't matter. It certainly might matter. Remember last game the opponent got a hit in and then had difficulty closing? So if you had a relic here, it might hinder their ability to make a creature a couple turns from now. So the opponent got to draw 14 extra cards this turn, but. They're gonna have to discard a lot of those cards. So, is, is that even card advantage? Come on.
yeah, they're, they don't realize how much deck damage they're dealing to themselves here. We just need to live for 18 more turns now. <laughs> yes, no Schwartz. You missed deck damage guy? I don't remember who deck damage guy was. <laughs> I, I have I just thought that was a meme. <laughs> Right? We are tight on life. You think Andrew Cuneo is deck damage guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cuneo still exists. He hasn't, he hasn't disappeared. <laughs> I'll board the wear and tear in now. I don't think blowing up anime dead would be that good at this spot though. <laughs> you miss Kenji? Yeah, right? Whatever happened to that guy? You miss Caleb? God, right? I also miss Caleb. I should sure try to get Chris Pat Pratt back on stream. I titled the the YouTube for that Halloween stream, uh, Chris Pratt streams Magic the Gathering, and it got way more viewers than my uh, than my usual. People were legit excited to see Chris Pratt stream Magic the Gathering, and then they got to be, they got to be very disappointed instead <laughs> when it was being a Mario costume. Yeah, I was just trying to draw and see if we found swords here, right? I don't care about the Prowler, but the Woodfall has Trample. So like Retrofitter turning this into a Flyer or Ballista could answer the Prowler. Too bad he's a terrible person. I don't think there's anything wrong with Mario. like Sundering Titan's not that great and I should just be playing some more white weenie shit.
Tier 3 Lodestone Golem seems a little slow against this opponent. I guess I'll send this back. Grim Monolith is like a nice explosive mana source though. Kind of a shame. I didn't see any uh, artifacts that I wanted to hit most of all. Uh, Gigant, just because you interact with someone and they're polite to you does not make them a good person. I'm not talking about, I'm not like shitting on anyone in particular here. I'm just saying that that's a, not a good heuristic. <laughs> they were polite to me specifically. <laughs> what amazing folk. Plenty of like actual monsters are like charismatic and polite and then, you know, not great people otherwise. Beat their dogs or whatever the fuck, you know. Also, the idea that Christians are some, like, <laughs> persecuted minority here in the U.S. is, uh, fucking ridiculous. That is a, uh, that is a laughable, laughable comment. And, uh, I am, in fact, laughing in my, in my heart of hearts. True, gamers are the real persecuted minority. I'm glad I'm glad my Twitch chat understands this. <laughs> one day. One day we'll get our doom. Wow, I just got snuffed. Turn one to rest, turn two him to Turok plus snuff out. Do they have this turn three reanimation? This is a brutal fucking opener on their on their part. They need to have a stop for it, Dendi. A lot of folks don't set a stop in the main phase of their opponent. Well, that'll do her. Um, I guess I'll give it one draw. For that wear and tear we boarded in. I was thinking the swords is already gone, but... Alright, good enough for me. Yeah, if you're playing... Cube in particular, but also for like modern and legacy, I recommend having a stop set on your opponent's um, first main phase, so you don't get caught by cards like Adeline or Rabble Master or what have you. Even though when your opponent puts it on the stack, you can like add a stop or um, hold control or whatever, it's like very easy to click through, right? Very easy to forget. what I deserve for playing creatures. <laughs> Absolutely surely it's Brad. Well murdered. And we'll dress into him to Turok and to him to Turok plus stuff out on the same turn. And then turn three reanimation. That was a good curve.
stops on everything. Stops on everything is nice if you don't want to worry, if you don't worry about like timing out ever. <laughs> if you think you will time out ever, <laughs> just ever, ever, ever at all. <laughs> I do not recommend having a stop on every on everything. <laughs> The Saga doesn't have anything to tutor for him. Kind of a bummer. Where is my turn one relic draw against the reanimator opponent? Cool, so that works for you, Draconis. <laughs> Would you recommend that everybody? <laughs> Because it works for you, would you recommend that everybody do it? We draw a, um, a workshop at some point, so it's not just the Urza Saga show. <laughs> fair enough, Draconis, fair enough. <laughs> Try swords that thing. I should probably wait until they like equip or something at least, right? Hey, Reno Five, thanks for the fourteen months. So imagine this is grabbing this uh, sort of Feast and Famine. Well, that's fine. I can just activate the retrofit aim. Something like a one. Aside from Parallax Wave or something, it's like kind of hard to imagine them coming out of this. Yay! My favorite part about that game was when I activated Urza Saga a couple of times. And that was just very easily enough to win. The Sundering Titan looks so bad. But sure is a mana sink. 
absolutely Takumi. What you feeling? This hand would be hot with the second land. Yep. I think Palace Jelly is better than Golos. Guess I'll find out. Uh, yeah, Takumi, that'd be decent. So if I open a time walk, I go blue green walk. If I open a dark ritual or something, I go storm. I think I'm gonna tangle wire here. Let's get this jailer rolling. Hell yeah, go lands. Uh, either ping me on uh, Twitter or Discord or Facebook or send me an email at calebderwood at hotmail.com. Any, any of those places should be fine, Amanda. Yeah, I think you've been long watching longer than... Um, uh, channel points have been a thing to Kumi, if I recall correctly. Or maybe it's just my, my foggy brain. To me, the channel points thing still seems like relatively recent. Am I open for a stip? I'm not. Not currently. Maybe later tonight. Song requests? Song requests are fun. Channel points have been around for three years now. Yeah, that sounds about right. So that's like 2019. That's like fucking 2019 feels like yesterday. <laughs> Both yesterday and like a decade ago at the same time somehow. Is there a roundabout price that an original magic artwork costs? Uh, interesting question. And there is no set price. 
because like different stuff is has different levels of desirability. The factors that can matter is like whether it's a like a coveted piece within the magic art. Like obviously a like a a planeswalker is gonna be worth more than like a draft common, right? Because there's magic collectors that are interested in magic art and they have attachment to the pieces from the game. But then there's also like the quality of the work itself, the size of it, uh, the medium that it's used, the artist. Like some artists are like their pieces are more sought off after than others. Um, I think the lowest you can do for an original piece of magic art is in the the low 1k range, and then pieces get much much higher than that. Like, it's not uncommon for a few pieces from the new set to, to sell for more than 10k. as a plan at least. Uh, I don't think a painting for Black Lotus was ever sold, or the painting rather, but I think some sketches have hit the market. Some like extremely, <laughs> extremely loose sketches. Plenty of artists sell prints, yeah. Wow, this wasteland's gonna fuck up my whole thing here, isn't it? Yeah, right? I put him with a legacy opener. When Thespian, Thespian stage turning into Saga is good. It's a thing you, a thing you want. I'm going to go ahead and take... Because Athalia might be dicking with them. Like, they already had to pay mana for the Lotus Petal. And then I was going to kill it end of turn. So I'm play out this Restoration. I mean, the Thespian stage can copy Wasteland and then answer the Wasteland before I play Saga, which seems very clunky and roundabout, but... Might be correct. Hey, Schwab, these are 51 months.
Ooh, <laughs> the plays. I was like, what fucking trick is even in here? Will any of the sagas from NEO have an impact on modern? Uh, the red-black one is good against um, Hammer Time, specifically. And, like, food stuff. I don't know. I don't know if anyone's doing that, though. This thing's not supposed to serve, right? Yeah, no. Not yet. Shadow? Yeah, right. No, places. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> Do I just take twelve? Twelve's kind of a lot. Oh, I see it now, bottom and filing people. I think it's the 420. Do you mind if I get you after this match? Well, the Yurzu Saga is not going to trigger on my next upkeep. It's going to trigger on my next main phase. So I could activate to make a token and then up upkeep copy planes. It's one of the reasons I'm fine, like, tagging with the Construct there. It's 
go ahead and gain another life, why not? They haven't activated this yet. <clears throat> but they can't do abilities mid-combat. Yeah, you have to do it before Chapter 3, because when the Chapter 3 thing goes on the stack, the sack effect will be on the stack, you know? So we're going to do it on upkeep. Might as well get this rolling, hum. when I get the smokestack? Sort of. Like, even with our board, even if we had not drawn Elishnorn here, us generating a Karnstruct plus a Foundry token every turn was going to outproduce this Adeline. Because the Adeline itself could only attack once, right? Without getting eaten by a Karnstruct. Maybe I should have just sacked the Basalt Monolith there. Is pretty good. I'm glad Chad knows how the the ruling behind the thespian stage thing. I usually don't focus on like the why, you know, like why things work in different ways. I'm usually just like, oh, oh, that's how it works. All right, <laughs> done learning, brain turned off, good to go. That's some nice artifacts for wearing tear. We just don't have that many red sources, you know, we got like a Boros Signet and Vantage. Yellow Lotus, it's like not really enough. Why 
Why question our machine overlords? In another fucking year or two, the rules are going to be different anyway. <laughs> just just tell me how, how the thing does the thing, and I'll, I'll be good. We can go from there. <laughs> when it changes, let me know. That's fine. There's only so much space. I've got a fucking walnut brain. I can't even fit the card names in there. Interesting. If I learn why, then I can answer future questions. Future rules questions? Is that my brand? <laughs> is that what this stream is about? Caleb D, rules expert extraordinaire. God, they got Wasteland and Strip Mine? Fucking A. A in this case is short for anus. I'm saying fucking anus. Figured that needed to be explained. Hey, Casual GC! Thanks for the 61 months there. I just still enjoying the stream, enjoying the YouTube, all that stuff. And fuck Athalia, too. Where's a ballista when you need one? Well, this isn't bad. That's not bad at all. So violent, this Thalia. Always attacking. Finage Cube is sweet. I enjoy it. Correct, Johan Leafheart. That is allowed. If they search the germ here, we get to put the Feast of Famine on the Stone Forge. Connect. Could be good, especially if I draw land for turn. Oh, that sucked. That's way worse than <laughs> getting swords. Land, please. Wow, the chump. With the man, I would have floated and played out the resto here. The chump is interesting because the Mother of Runes can brick the Stone Forge for like the rest of the game, right? So they must have another answer to this sword. Thespian stage doesn't need to turn back into a saga. It can stay a planes. It just keeps the abilities that it had as it was, as it was a saga. Fireworks. But well, maybe I'm misunderstanding your question.
Once board's getting spicy. Restoration uh, land the reanimate comes into play tapped, so I don't want a restoration here because it doesn't actually get me to like Elishnorn faster. <laughs> I know I'm saying restoration when there's a uh, <laughs> two restos, but. Huspian stage works on any land, Tron or not. Sweeper, or Baneslayer Angel, or some shit. Taking seven here, that's so much damage. If I ECD the Adeline and Chump Figure, then I'll go to one. But then, like, what are my live draws, right? But I don't think there's a way for a sword hit to do anything here either. I think I'm just dead. Land isn't live. The opponent's got a wasteland for the Thursday Saga. How do I feel about Restoration of Eganjo and Vintage Cube? Uh, I like the card fine. It's not, I don't think it's a card that like obviously deserves to be in or obviously doesn't. It's one of those like optionals, you know, you can put it in like your question mark pile. Land. Land doesn't fucking help. Still. <laughs> Remember that the opponent's got a wasteland. So my land for turn there is going to be the saga. So they wasted. Right? They've been like aggressively wasting landing me this whole time. And then it doesn't matter if I draw a land for the next turn or not, I'm still not casting that uh, Elishnorn. Slayer would have been a lot better of a sideboard card than Resto, but I didn't get any of those. Yeah, I was gonna say, they put him as Wasteland and Strip Mine in their deck, which makes my deck a lot worse. <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm leaning really hard on like Urza Saga and um, and workshops and uh yeah the aganjo could uh reanimate that saga later 
That'd be hot. Won't work if I pop the relic, though, of course. Michael Benson thinks the sub thinks the 21 months. I think I'm just gonna have to pop this relic. It's unfortunate. You know, as soon as I pop the relic, I'm gonna draw that <laughs> that saga. Already burned through a braid. So unless they have burn to finish off the resto, I think they should have just done this before attacking and gotten in the damage, right? Yeah, that makes sense. I need a fucking Alice Norn is what I need. This palace dealer goes south real fast. Well, we would attack with the germ first, Chain of Worm. And it doesn't matter that they would protect, even if they did protect something, like we still, drawing the card off the Palace Jailer is more important than exiling one of their cards, unless you're like, exiling the Mother of Runes specifically, which we would probably get to do, right? We would attack, they would like blow out our blocks with the Mother of Runes, then we would Palace Jailer the Mom, but then they get the Mom back after they hit us. Oh, here we go. Glad I waited.
They have the answer for the Lista, and it's still just the sickest fucking thing. Since we're exiling a token, it doesn't matter if they get the Monarch back in terms of getting their creature back. They will, like, they will get the token back. Obviously, them getting the Monarchy is still bad for us. I could run out this Signet, but I think I'm just going to pass and hold my mana up in case they draw an answer to the Batter Skull itself. Or we could draw something off the Monarch trigger. What's up, Elish Norin? Playing the Signet, the main benefit is that um, it ramps us to a possible Ugin, right? If we drew Ugin. GG! Yeah, that Ballista was really the training point, but the follow-up plays were not bad either. Mana Tithe wasn't castable 7. They had a Thalia in play. Come on. Come on, catch up. Come on!